Hi violinists, welcome to Brown Strings. I'm Henriette and this lesson is about stamping dance from the Fiddle Time Joggers book. Now here we see a lot of double stops uh, and that gets very very exciting. Will you join in me, with me? We're playing it straight away from the beginning. Here we go. One, two, and... <laughs> Well done. Now, when we play double stops, the trick is not to press too hard on your bow. Uh, what we need to do instead of pressing harder is to get the angle right. Now, we've been discussing elbow levels before. If you don't know what that is, please go and start the lessons on the Fiddle Time Joggers book, and I'll be talking quite a lot about the levels of your elbow. But in short, what it means is that your elbow, your right elbow, determines which string level your bow is going to play on. And you can see this when you just seesaw it a little bit. Okay, now in this stamping dance, we need to play the G and D string. So my elbow is going to go quite high. And you can actually see here, when you look at the contact point here of the bow on the strings, how you can touch both of the strings so that you're not leaning too much towards the A string because that means then that you're going to miss the G string and you don't want to go too high with your elbow because then you're going to play exclusively on the G string and you might even touch the corner of your violin here so then you've gone way too high so let's measure that out a little bit and as you go along and you learn this piece you learn to feel exactly where your elbow level is so it's a bit of fine tuning there where do you where do you touch both strings and where is it comfortable enough? All that time you want to make sure that this shoulder is in its lowest position. I get this quite a lot, people playing like this. So if this is you, see if you can drop your shoulder down. Because we can use our elbows independently from your shoulders, as you can see. Okay? If you find that difficult, if your elbow comes up and your shoulder comes up, practice that first so that you can leave your shoulder down while you move your elbow. Okay, now let's play the beginning. And as you may have noticed, I'm playing the whole bow this time for every crotchet and half a bow for every quaver. From the beginning, one and two and. <laughs> So, 
know that your levels are much better, you hit those strings much better. Now, if you are not going to press on the bow, you might ask, because I said earlier, when you play double stops, do not press harder on your bow. But your question might be, how do I get to go loud then? Because it says heavily, it has an accent on the first note, and it says fortissimo. And the trick to that is to use more bow, and that is why I said use the whole bow for each crotchet, look. <laughs> speed. If I use less bow, I'm not as loud as I can go here. So aim to play as loud as you possibly can, especially on these double stops. Now this time when we play the double stops, let's look at the last line. Okay, so let's play the last line next. And I really want you to experiment with your bow length on this last line. One and two and. <laughs> When you practice that on your last note, it will pay off at the start of this piece as well. Now, let's have a look at this second section now, and we're going to start in bar five. Okay, so I want to play this. And I want you to make sure that you have your first finger on the string as well. So if you find that difficult to do, do it this way then you get used to using that first finger. What we don't want is this. Because this way, where you place the second finger is a random guess. Okay, and we don't do random guesses on the violin. It's just not accurate enough. Guitarists can have a random guess because they have got those frets, you remember, all those white lines, and they indicate where their fingers go. But for us, we have to measure it out from our first finger. So. Why don't we just practice this a few times? See if you can get both fingers on the string. Now, have you noticed that my ridge of knuckles here is level with the E string? So if, if your fingers are fairly low below the fingerboard like this, can you see that row of knuckles is way down below the level of the strings? Hoist your fingers up a little bit and let's see if you can get that finger line here close to the E string again. So all these knuckles here of your fingers are level with the strings. Now. Let's go and play. Practice your fingers on the G string. Okay, one, two, three, four. <laughs> challenging to do so it's okay if you feel a little bit lost here and think what is going on here okay so we'll practice it again if you find it easier just practice G 1 2 a couple of times shall we play bar 5 again and that whole line 1 2 3 4 
that can be quite a challenge and that's okay if you find that a challenge we'll do it together one more time shall we so take your time if you need to take a break between two notes because you can't quite put two fingers down together play some one by one and you'll be all right you will get used to that today might be very challenging tomorrow it might be slightly challenging the day after tomorrow it might still be a little bit concerning but the next day i'm sure you can put both fingers down together so here we go one this is bar five one two three four <laughs> and to put all your fingers down I'm impressed very good so for those people who are a little bit more advanced with this song already and this may be you later on in the week come back to this video and then learn the second half we're going to go a little bit faster now here we go one and two and <laughs> share it with your friends have you already subscribed to the channel if not please do so now and any comments or questions especially about double stops it will be interesting to get a conversation going do please write things in the comment section below I do get to see these comments and I will respond to you I promise I very much look forward to seeing you in distant bells but for now goodbye <laughs>